G'day guys, Hugh L. Jones here, and welcome to episode one of my brand new podcast. My first guest is world-renowned and prolific guitarist, James Norbert Ivanyi. James also happens to be a very old friend of mine, and when we shot this episode, we hadn't seen each other in a few months, so we had just a great catch-up. We had a few laughs, we talked about his recent touring schedule, a few exciting things he has coming up, and most importantly, the release of his brand new signature guitar with Sir Guitars from California. If you'd like to keep up to date with what James is up to, you can check all the links in the bio below. But for now, please enjoy episode one of Picking Bones with Hugh L. Jones. Um, great, James Norbert Avani. Welcome back to the podcast. Oh, thank you. It's and, good to be back. And this is episode one, <laughs> even though it's welcome it? back. Yeah. yeah nice. Well, I've had a few dress rehearsals and um, mm. let me just put that on, on silent. I'll do the same. And it's, it's just one of those things, man. You know, it, it, it takes some time. It takes a few experiments, but I'm so glad you were able to come back. Of and I'm so glad that you didn't um, scream at me on the phone when I asked you to come and reshoot episode one. I mean, I screamed about it to Sarah, but it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> Sarah and Bertie, I think, at the yeah. same time. Yeah, they took it. The full brunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Sarah, I'm, I'm sorry. Bertie, I'm sorry that you had to deal with that. Thank you for putting up with mm. my shenanigans. Man, it's a pleasure. A pleasure to be back. Happy to be here. Fantastic. Um, so look, let's just get into a few things. Last time you were here, <clears throat> we talked a lot about Japan because you had just been there, but that's now a few months ago. Yes, a little bit. So, but let, we, I think we can, we can touch on that as well. But more importantly, James, your signature guitar mm. is still, I think, a major focus in the guitar world and in your world. Yes. And I think we, we should really start with that. Sure. So I know it's been a few months now, but you recently released your very first ever modern classic modern just a modern just a modern i'm sorry yeah, um, right. sir custom guitar i did how does that feel it's surreal it still doesn't feel like a thing that's actually happened I, I there were all these little stages along the way where i thought it would start to sound and feel you know like something that exists like you know when i posted about it publicly or when i would see it you know online but it's still it just feels kind of like a dream it's very very cool and i'm very honored and privileged to uh to have done that it's very cool i mean the li the list of people who play the guitar i mean in terms of numbers we, we must be talking millions and millions if not hundreds of millions of people yeah um and the amount of people who have a signature guitar from not only yeah a a recognized brand but one of the B biggest and best man not biggest but one of the best manufacturers of, of the instrument in the world and you have a signature with that company mm -hmm. that list must be infinitesimal compared to how many people actually play guitar yeah i look i don't know how i hacked my way into that one but um yeah it's it's a um it's a rare honor considering how many people are you know playing the instrument over time and especially you know i'm very honored to be a part of that level on the Sir roster, which mm -hmm. feature, you know, not just some of the greatest guitarists of all time, but my personal heroes, you know, guys like Scott Henderson, Guthrie Govan, these are people who have had um, signature models with Sir. And um, yeah, it's it's a massive, massive honor. And You hit me to Guthrie Govan and he is next level. I mean, he is, he's, yeah. I don't I, even understand. When I watch him play, I don't even think I understand <laughs> the instrument well enough to fully appreciate. I don't think any of us do. <laughs> <laughs> he's the goat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've heard a few other people kind of talk about him. Um, is it Rick Piata who has that um, yep. YouTube channel and podcast and everything? Mm -hmm. And he he talked about him as well, basically saying I think he said something that he's probably one of the greatest guitar players who's, who's living or dead. Yes, uh, he's just he's incredible. He's phenomenal. Yeah, um, you know, it's not much you. Can and really you're say. you're up there with him. You're in, you're on the same roster. Uh, <coughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at, at least in terms of like you know what what instruments you play. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we play we play similar looking guitars. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, it's I you know I'm very honored and, and grateful to have been given the opportunity. It's really really cool. And and how long did the process take? How from from the first conversation with Sir saying, uh, you know, whether that did, okay, let me ask you this actually, did they mm. ask you or did you ask them? Yeah, they they asked me. Okay, and then from that first moment, that first email, that first phone call, 
to the guitar being released that somebody can purchase from a store. How long is that process? Oh, it was probably about three years. Or wow. Up, I'd say. Yeah, it was quite some time. So, you know, the build and manufacturing and R&D process is quite intensive. And, you know, the obviously very extremely high-end handmade instruments. So it takes a long time just to get one together. So, yeah, there was maybe a year of talking and specking and video calls and then another year of, um, you know, actually trying physical instruments and getting a working prototype together. And how did that – so how many prototype guitars did you actually get in your hands until you said, okay, that's the one, sign off? Three. Three? Yeah. So three renditions of a prototype? Yes. Okay, that's that's pretty good. I mean, that seems pretty efficient. Yeah, well, it was based off my original mod that I'd played for like 10 years. So it was kind of mostly there. There was just some electronic features and some small kind of details I wanted to get at. And yeah, so it took you know, like a year of that process and then there was um, maybe another year until it actually hit the market and was released and all the rest of it. So about three, three and a half years, I'd say, kind of all up. That's pretty, I mean, that's, look, I'd have no frame of reference. I don't know how long it would take for, you know, any other guitarist to get that, to go through that process. But three sure. and a half years seems pretty legitimate. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's it's quick. I've, I've heard of it taking much longer for people, you know, lots of back and forth and people are very particular about stuff. And, you know, it's it's interesting when someone says, you know, if you want anything in the world, what would you want? Totally. It's just like kind of an odd thing to know, like, and also the artist isn't a guitar builder and manufacturer. So we often don't know, you know, you will rattle off things that just don't work. They're just not good ideas. They don't functionally make a lot of sense. So there's a bit of translation and I think we got to it pretty quick. Yeah, but there's and there's one aspect of your guitar that from what you've told me is at the very least not a common feature, but it might even be that there's no guitar that has this feature. Can you talk about this a little bit? Yes, so I think you're referring to the volume preset. I am. This yes. this gets me excited. I think this is it to me a novice it sounds incredibly innovative and 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 almost so innovative it's like well why has nobody thought about this before? Yeah. But yeah. please t- tell tell me more about it. Well, it's essentially a way of getting to the volume sweet spot as quickly as possible. Um on the volume knob, which is what I use a lot when I play. I don't tend to be a big pedal preset switcher kind of guy. So I just wanted a way to achieve, say, 25% volume or 35% volume or any any volume immediately. For people who aren't guitar players, what is ex- exactly what is that sweet spot? Like what are you referring to? So it's when you've got the guitar wide open, full gain, sounds awesome, you know, ripping, all that kind of stuff. You turn the volume down to the sweet spot. All of the frequencies remain, but the gain kind of starts to go away. So that's what we would call the sweet spot. And you can play dynamically. If you strum gently, it'll be clean. If you strum hard, it'll be very distorted. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of sweet <coughs> spot of gain, I would say. And every guitar is a little different? Yeah, it's all a little different. Sure. And it depends on your rig and your rig settings and your pedals and whatever, how you know your style of music, whatever it is. And... If you just duck slightly below that point on the guitar, all of the EQ vanishes and it gets really thin and tinny sounding and weird. So sometimes, so in in a, in a moment when you've got lights in your eyes, you're sweaty. There's there's other band members on stage. You, you've got a crowd of people chanting your name. The stress yeah. levels go up, and you've got to get that exact sweet spot with a volume knob on your guitar. It's really tricky. It's very tricky to get every Especially time. Especially in my problematic music when I'm on stage. Yeah. And, and I've got very limited time and a lot of notes about to come up to you, try and get You're not it. just bashing out four chords and <laughs> singing a pretty melody. You've, there's a little bit more going on with your music. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> but yeah, so for me it was important just, you know, when I'm on stage or I'm in the studio, just to be able to set that spot to the rig, which my rig tends to never change, and just to be able to get there instantly. So we wrote it into a small discrete button onto the guitar where you can preset any volume, you know, whether you're, you're the end user or I'm the end user, you can set a preset volume and just touch a button and it goes straight to it and straight back. And you've got a little little um, pot at the back where you control that, exactly where that sweet spot might be. Yeah, yeah. So if you get the guitar, you can open up the back cavity and set it to your rig, whatever works best for you. And I think we talked about this 
previously, but you can just turn it off and make it a kill switch. Which is so cool. Yeah. You then can... it's like a double feature in one thing. Yeah, yeah. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. So basically, if you want that feature, you have to go out and buy the James Norbert of Vine's <laughs> signature Sir Modern guitar. That's right. Go to your local dealer today. <laughs> <laughs> but that's right. As far as I know, it was a... It hadn't been done before, and I don't know if it's been done since. It's it's definitely a unique feature to that guitar. I've never heard of it until your guitar, so that's, you know. Yeah, fun. it's one of those things that, you know, I've, I've gotten the guitar into the hands of players, and when you explain it to people and they try it, you know, I see the, oh, man, this is a really great idea, but it's just not something that, you know, you think exists out there or that there's a need for, but it's very practical. But I think that's it. I think so many guitar players, it's like so many... So many aspects of life just get used to it. Like, oh, I yeah. wish I could find that sweet spot easier. Oh, well, let me get on with the rest of my life. Yeah, and totally. then But <laughs> someone like yourself and Sir Guitars have come along and well, have had that same thought and gone, oh, but we could actually do something about this. Yep. That's yep. what you call innovation, James. Well, there you go. I do what I can. <laughs> Brilliant, man. Well, I mean, I'm sure there'll be more guitars with that feature going forward, but, you know, you heard it here first. Yeah. There you go. So, um. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's, it's a very cool part of the guitar. And I use it like every day in the studio. Mm -hmm. You know, I've just been working on some new music lately and using it all the time. It's fantastic. It's a great feature. Beautiful. And you semi recently, as we sort of touched on at the beginning of this, but you went to Japan I recently did. to to promote said guitar. I did. Um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about that. How was that? It was a dream. I loved every second that I was there. The people were amazing. Food was awesome. Culture was great. City, Japan, coolest place I've ever been to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I haven't been everywhere, but I've been to some pretty cool places and it was unreal. And yeah, so I was over there promoting the signature guitar. We had a couple of clinics uh, in some guitar stores there, mostly in the Tokyo area. Mm -hmm. And they were super fun. Everyone who came out was awesome. The, uh, the crew that I was with, uh, taking us around and helping us out with everything. They were the distributors for Sir in Japan. They were so lovely. I'd like to think we've all become kind of lifelong friends. Beautiful. And you're still in touch with these people? Yeah, yeah. Nice. It, it was it was so awesome, man. Nothing but great memories. It was really, really fun. And, you know, life came along. We had a little bit of a holiday at the same time. Did you guys go anywhere special. else or you just spent your time in Tokyo together? Yeah, mostly Tokyo. Mm -hmm. we're, we're very keen to go back and explore Bro, a whole lot more. I'm desperate I, to go back. I know that you've been over and explored quite a bit. I've been a number of times. Um, it's the coolest city I've ever been to, Tokyo. Yeah, and yeah. I've been to Kyoto as well, um, but not since I was very, very little, but I would love to go back. That's a much older city, much more um, older homes and temples. And yeah, where, where should I go if I'm not working? 100% Kyoto. I think that's the next thing. But okay. uh, look, I haven't explored Japan a lot, so I'm not the person to ask. They're the only two cities I've been to, but people say Osaka is amazing and Sapporo is amazing. Um, <clears throat> but... Kyoto has to be on the list. All right. If you want to experience old world Japan, that's where you do it. I do. Um, but Tokyo itself, man, it's uh, look, the food, the drinks, the culture, the people, this, the, 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 the nightlife, the energy. It's cool AF. And they've got great jazz bars and great music scene. It's, it's a wonderful part of the world. I absolutely love it. And I will. I think we're looking to go back this year, hopefully. So. Sick. Uh, me and a couple of friends who you know, Stevie and mm. um, Henry and a few other people, are, and I think Bonnie as well, are threatening to go to Ooh. Japan to go skiing Ooh. at Christmas time. Oh, my God. So <laughs> it's it's in the planning stages. And as you yeah. know, I've, I've just been in Thailand for two months. So mm. taking another long extended trip will be a um, little tricky to, to, to navigate through. But anyway, I think snowboarding or skiing in in Japan for Christmas with your mates would be pretty awesome. Yeah, it sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but maybe you come too. I would love that. There you go. And look, we'll talk after we this. Will, we will plan a, a, a ski schedule. But, but dude, like I'm going to put this back on you for a second. You know, We haven't seen each other for a hot minute. Mm. We haven't had a proper conversation since he got back. Mm -hmm. This was all kind of last minute. Yep. You've just come back from Thailand. I have. Dude, give it to me. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. Um, I this is, you're the guest, actually, and I'm the host, but I will talk about myself for two seconds. I know, but it's it's amazing what you've been doing over there. <clears throat> so I've been doing Muay Thai over there yeah. um, and and just also kind of taking a pause from life. Um, as you know, I've had the year from hell, which I, I'm not going to get into on the air, but sure. um, it was a really nice way to... Um, uh, 
I don't want to sound too lame about this, but find myself or, sure, or, sure. or even just take just take a little pause from reality. Yeah, man. Um, and training every day. And I mean, what? Be- I mean, I love Muay Thai, and I've been doing it for quite some time just here in Australia. But what better place to do it than where it originally came from? Yeah, you've been smashing it. And I'm feeling like I'm in great shape, uh, at least the best shape I've been in in a while. I'm mm. not I haven't quite kicked my goals yet, but um, I feel as I'm well and truly on the road. Awesome. Um, and and I and I learned a lot too. It wasn't just about you know fitness and and feeling better, but I learned so much. I mean, the 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 Thai fighters are the best in the world, obviously. Um, and we're lucky in Australia. We've got some great fighters here too, and and I have a great coach here who's who's very knowledgeable and was a um, a world champion. You know, he's retired now, but he certainly knows his stuff. So he's a great wealth of knowledge. But Amazing. it's just a different and and having no distractions, mm. not being not worrying about paying bills or um, life <clears throat> admin. It's just it all kind of fizzles away and you just focus on one thing. It's amazing. And it was really, really great. Yeah, well, you look amazing. Thank well. you. It's the first thing I noticed when I saw you today Thank you. was how many kgs you've shattered. It's, a, it's quite a bit, man. You're a it's a big, it's, tall, thin boy. Uh, yeah, a couple more to go and I'll be where, I wanna, where I'm at. But, yeah, it's it's, amazing, it's, since I started this journey, I've, I think it, it's certainly over. Oh, God, I figured it out today. Somewhere between ten and fifteen. I'm not hundred percent sure, unreal. but yeah. Yeah. you look like you've seen the sun and you've been, you know, working Dude, at it every day. The other vampires are furious with me. <laughs> I came back with like a ten percent tan, and everyone's like, "What the fuck is going like on?" It. It's starting to look like me. Fantastic. I, <laughs> I did stay out of the sun as much as I could, but you can't help it. No, you know, it's, it's You're in a it's, tropical it's, paradise. And it, yeah, of course. And you got to go to the beach. You got to swim at the pool. Absolutely. And, but I, I did just have a few fresh tattoos, and I was like a bit worried. But no, they seem to kind of stick around and they're still they they're still there they're still there <laughs> the funny thing about tattoos is they're still there awesome, um, man. but it was dude it was the greatest and um i've i've this is my new favorite thing in the whole world i, I mean look I've, and and hugh has I, just gifted me with one of these things shall we take a hit i think we should take a hit all right let's do it and for anybody out there who cheers. doesn't know what this is <laughs> cheers you better explain this is not drugs <laughs> Oh, but it might as well be. Oh, I can breathe again. <laughs> <laughs> it's so basically minty. like a Thai Vix or, um, you know, it, it does smell like Tiger Balm, but it's it's sort of like it's like a herbally packet. I, I have no idea what's in here, but all the Thai people and especially the fighters, they're always walking around sniffing Weird. on these little packets and they just bring, I don't know, they open up the I mean, I've never, something in your yeah, nose. Yes, Yeah, it's like a like a... I mean, chewing gum for your nose. <laughs> That's exactly what it it's is. It's like a mint overload. 100%. So this is this is my new favorite thing, and I, I've got to find somewhere in Australia to buy these because they're just they're the best. I absolutely love them. That's lovely, man. Thank you for the little gift. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Of I'll course. be irritatingly sniffing it for the duration of this podcast. Me too. Well, Excellent. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, dude, it was the best. And I would also love the Thai people, yeah. the Thai culture, Thai food. Right. Um you know, and it's it's uh, Tokyo is one thing because mm. it's you know a a modern metropolis and and it's such a um how do I say this what, what uh, you would you would never draw a parallel between say Tokyo and Bangkok I mean it's a very yeah. different existence but um, yeah I haven't hung out in Bangkok before. Well, see, okay, so I hadn't either until this trip. And I've been to Thailand, I think, five, four or five times. Gotcha. But I spent I spent the first sort of six weeks there just in Koh Samui, which is my favorite spot to go. Um, I love it. It's, I think it's a really nice balance of, of things. It's an island. I got to go. You, and you get away, from, and it's, it's kind of paradise, but it's not too quiet. Some of the smaller islands are a little bit too quiet. This still has... A nightlife and some bars and and got a couple of great Muay Thai stadiums and yeah, lots yeah, of touristy yeah. stuff you can do and it's it's a big island, um, but uh, I got a friend who lives there. He's always trying to get me over there. Well, we should. I mean, anytime you go, I'll I'll be right behind you. It, it, I need no, I need the <laughs> smallest excuse to get on a plane and go to Thailand. It's, it's <clears> going to happen for sure. But so I was, I was there for the majority of the time because that's where I was training. That's where the gym that I'd been to before that I, I knew. And I just wanted to be in that environment. I never thought I'd spend time in Bangkok. But I was there and I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw a post on my friend Bonnie's page, uh, Bonnie from Stand Atlantic. And she said that she was like, Stand Atlantic were playing a show in Bangkok. Oh. 
Oh, because I saw that. Yes. I was very confused. Oh, and I've got something to tell you too, actually. I'm I... really excited about this. Wait, it's coming. <laughs> okay. You're going to get it in a second. Okay. Um, you're going to be very proud of me, okay. I hope. So, of course, I was like, and I looked at my dates and looked at the date of the show. I'm like, oh my God, that's, I'm here. I mean, Perfect. I'm in I'm in a different part of Thailand, but Bangkok to Koh Samui is like an hour and 10 on a plane. It's 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 no time at all. Um, and I... Uh, I'm going to say this now. I might edit this out. I don't know, <laughs> but um, I promised I wasn't going to talk about this. But I, I my my new girlfriend, yes, was um, who I met in Thailand. Mm-hmm. Uh, I showed them Stand Atlantic, funnily enough, and I showed them a whole bunch of my friends' bands and music. Because we one night we were talking, we we're having a YouTube party together and showing each other stuff. I showed them Stand Atlantic, awesome, and she loved them, absolutely loved them, awesome. Um, so when I told her that they're playing in Bangkok, and does she want to go? Of course, she was like absolutely, and she was she was as excited as I was. How fun! So, got in contact with Bonnie just to, just to confirm that it, I wasn't losing my mind. That they were in fact playing in in <laughs> yeah, Thailand. It wasn't the cover band. No, yeah, <laughs> totally the Stand Atlantic <laughs> tribute show. Um, yeah, and as soon as she, I, bu- we, I booked us a couple of flights and Unreal. a hotel room, and we spent not only because not only did we go to the show, but basically we had a week until we were flying back. From but both she's going back to Russia and I was going back to Australia. Sure. Um, so I was like, well, let's just spend a week in Bangkok and see what it's all about. Sure. Oh, okay. And we did. And sure. um, before I get into that, one little back back step. So because I'm friends with the band and want to be helpful to all my friends whenever yeah, they yeah. kind of uh, gift me a ticket to their show, I said, is there anything else I can do to help you guys? Thinking they would ask me to tech for Jono, the drummer. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm always more than happy to do. I teched on their record for him. Yeah, nice. um, and they and then apparently John, I said, no, I've got it all under control. I've been working on my tuning chops. I want to do it myself. And I was like, that's cool. And he said, and there's so many people here all helping already. Awesome. You don't need to do anything. But how do you feel about being a guitar tech? Oh. And I said, well, I mean, I, I'll I, do it. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guitar teched for Stand Atlantic for one show. How cool. And... All it really was. So come on, tell me, what did you do? <laughs> Not very much. I I I, I, I used the word guitar the tech. Wingies. No, I mean, all, I could have if I needed to. <laughs> nice. But no, my only job was to hand Bonnie her guitar when she needed it. I mean, that's that's the work of a pro right there. I I think I did a pretty bloody good job. Yeah, oh, I would love that if someone did that for me. And I also um, pushed play on the on the playback mm. rig. That was mm. that was my shining moment. That's big I walked on the stage, pushed the foot pedal, and then walked off. Man. It was spectacular. Quite frankly, the show would not have been the same without me doing that. Look, I, I totally agree. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, how cool, man. But that was fun. And um, I, obviously, you know. But uh, Thai gigs, uh, is, are, are Thai shows a thing? It was great. Goes off? It was It was a small room, and they, they had three shows, right? They had the... Um, they had one in Singapore, one in Indonesia, and and this one in Thailand. Um, oh. This was a smaller show. It was like a club gig. It was like 300 people, I think, sold out. So it was a, a, a vibe in the room. There was energy. Um, they usually play much bigger shows than that, but I, I don't know why they did this one in particular, but it doesn't matter. It was a great vibe, and um, and people were like singing the songs back to them as well. So clearly it's a, it's a legitimate fan base. That's um, really all you could want. That, that know so their cool. music. And they were supporting a band um, that, funnily enough, Mike Avername showed me. Random. When we were 18, called We the Kings. Okay. And I haven't heard of them since I was 18 years old. They're very poppy, kind of emo. Um, I know that's a bit of a bad word, but um, still good songs, really well written songs. And they were nice guys and they're pro band. It was really cool to see them. But sure. it was just a weird blast from the past. Like I remember. How trippy. This band from being a teenager, and all of a sudden here they are with and, my friends. And band they were on tour as well, kind of. They thing. were. They did the whole tour together. They did all the th- the three shows together, Interesting. I believe. Interesting. Yeah. So that was fantastic. And then the rest of the time I was in Bangkok, I just did Muay Thai every day religiously. Yeah. There's but you've a. You've been smashing. It's unreal. There was a. There's a gym called Yokao. It's also a brand. They do you know, gloves and shin guards and gear and stuff. Cool. Um, and, um. I went to their gym and it was fantastic. I had a really good trainer who I saw every day and 
yeah. got the shit kicked out of me and uh, <laughs> and, and I gave him money I and then I left. <laughs> I saw I saw a quite a quite a few Instagram videos of you just pouring sweat after yeah. being bashed in the uh, in the ring for a while. Yeah, it was the best, man. It That's was so fantastic. Good. Oh man, so, that sounds like a blast. Well, cheers to that. Cheers to that. I Thank love you, that, man. Thank it's good you. to have you back, though. It's good to be back. I'm glad to see you go up by sea back in the motherland. Yes, look, um, and straight back to work. Straight back to yes, straight into a podcast. I have to, and I'm, the best thing about doing a trip like this is, I mean, I've got so much momentum now. So 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 much. Uh, you know, wind in my sails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's ready. It's time to get back, get to work, and awesome. get all this stuff happening. But enough about me, because this is about you. Back to me. And back my, to you. And my wet jeans. And your wet jeans. <laughs> well, okay. This is a <laughs> this is a good little segue. I'm cold. Um, uh, uh, did they dry properly, or are they still they're a bit damp still? They're a wee bit damp. Oh god, right. I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, so you just rode here on your beautiful new motorcycle. I did. Um, yeah, I, I stupidly did that. Yes. Uh, you got caught in the rain. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> I have to say, there's I, I miss riding a motorcycle pretty much every day. I, I think I, I probably think about it every day. Yeah, it is the greatest. It is the greatest. Yeah. But I don't miss that. That is one aspect. Yeah, it's I not, do not it's miss. It's not great when that happens, and I avoid it as much as possible. I if it's raining, I just generally don't ride. But I was kind of limited in my means to get here. And I looked at the weather forecast and I stupidly trusted it. It looked okay. It said from 11 onwards, it will be a cloudy and sunny day. And that actually did hold up until I got about one minute from your place. <laughs> and then it just came down like nothing. And I had to hide in the pet barn car park <laughs> and wait for you to come home. So, well, yeah. I'm sorry I was a couple of minutes late, actually. It's, it's, um. Dude, That's my good. bad. But yes, I got caught in the rain. But I can't be held responsible for the weather. Right. But you know what? Like, e even though I, you know, got a drenching and a rinse down, it was the thrill of a lifetime riding over here on my big new Triumph Street Twin. It was fantastic. So yes, it's now, all good. Now talk to me. So, I mean, I don't know a huge amount about Triumphs. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've ridden one, I think, a million years ago. I don't. I think maybe when I worked at Gasoline, I think I yeah, maybe rode one of theirs. rode my old one as well. I think, I, yes, I did take you. You had a Bonnie, right? Yeah, we've had two Bonnies in yes, my house. Yes, I think I took it for a spin once. Yeah. Um, Still a bit small for you, I think. <clears throat> the, all of, look, this is what I was going to say is, is is my knowledge is much more in the Harley Davidson world because no, that's. I, I keep seeing them on Marketplace don't, when I'm out there James in the morning don't. lurking around. James, don't. I can't. And you just can't. I just can't. It's, it's, it's like. Wait, would you ever get a shovel head? Oh. <sighs> Like I mean, I mean, 80s, I, I always see those 80s shovel heads and I immediately just think of you on it. And I'm like, that's all working for me. You, you, you must have a, a, a direct line into my <laughs> dreams because, yes, I mean, uh, there's, there's probably very few Harley Davidsons I wouldn't want to own and or mm, ride. Mm. Um, not very many of the new ones. I'm not a fan of the new. I've seen like they, they, they're, they're doing an electric one, which I think is not very cool yeah um let's, let's not go near the electric car electric bike no debate maybe we, we don't need we will but well electric car debate is one thing the electric bike is just don't That's please true. please yeah. don't anybody do that yeah. um they're also quiet which is very very dangerous very dangerous they go, yeah yeah you need an engine and and an exhaust so you yeah. can let people know that you're there yeah, they haven't quite got the range either very expensive electric bikes. Are they? Very expensive. Yeah, yeah. I've never. I mean, I've never looked into it because I would never consider owning one. But yeah, what, what do they run? What does a, a electric motorcycle, a high end electric motorcycle, oh, go for? You can look in, you know, ten to twenty k. Right. In ten to twenty k and eighty to a hundred and something maybe kilometer range. It's not very much. Right. So they're just for generally getting around town. And I think they're cool. I mean, look, if that's what you're doing, you want to zip around to the shop, zip to the beach, that kind of stuff. We'll get a scooter then. Yeah, or just get a Harley Davidson. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, feel, just feel cool. man up. Yeah, <laughs> feel cool while doing it. But so, so my bike was a. I had a. Um, well, my first one was a Harley Davidson Street Five Hundred, which was a really good bike to oh, learn I on. Forgot you had that. That's yeah. right. Your first little kind of learner thing. That's and right. a, when I, I remember the first day I rode it, I was like, "God, this is a lot of power." And then yeah. about three days later, I was like, <laughs> "Jesus Christ, I need more power." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Five hundred gets old pretty quick. <laughs> Yeah, and then my but next it's enough. It'll get you to the beach and back. It'll get you to the beach and back. And then my next bike was a a street bob, which I think was sixteen hundred cc. God, I love that thing. That bike, that was such a great oh, bike, man. I have such sweet memories of 
pushing you down the street when its battery died. <laughs> Classic Harley. That Davidson happened a number of times, business. dude. And it's I, well, all part of the joy. Well, I learned how to how to kickstart a bike. Not kickstart. What do you call it when you when you pop yeah, the clutch and you jump yeah, on it? Yeah, yeah you jump start it. The first time I did that, I almost shat my pants because <laughs> <laughs> it ticks on and it clicks on and it just takes off. You're yeah, like, yeah. Oh my god, you gotta hang on. Wow, but um, it's all a part of the joy of of motorcycle ownership. Is, is having problems being all with the dressed dressed in your baddest and having your buds push you down the road while your little legs Flintstone along. You know, it's all a, it's all a part of the joy. Oh man, that but was that a was, fun time. That was a great bike. No, and you know, it was well, a great I, bike. I had my uh, my old T one hundred Bonneville when you had that, which was a That's cool right. bike. I remember that. And uh, yeah, then you know, I've had a bunch of vintages. I was in a vintage phase for a while. You know, I just had an an old eighties SR four hundred, which I kind of brought back from the dead a little bit. Yeah, lots of help. Help. Shout out to the Deus uh, crew in Camperdown. They you know helped me with a lot of the big real man mechanical things yep and that bike was awesome but you know just had a cool opportunity to get the street twin which is a bike that i've wanted for a long time they only made it for about four years so this is this is where i was going with this actually Uh, what's the difference between a bonneville and a thruxton is the street twin in the middle is that what we're talking about here man so like i would say that the bonneville is the the famous you know your, your dad's bike in the country just every day nice and upright you know classic triumph motorcycle yeah the Thruxton is way on the other end. That's like a like a racing Bonneville, yeah. essentially. So it's like, you know, dropped, more forward. dropped bars, lots of like racing fairings, all that kind of stuff. I would say the Straight Twin is, yeah, kind of in the middle of those two things. So it's, you know, Bonneville engine, you know, same same kind of stuff, but you're just slightly more kind of leaning forward, a little bit more badass looking, um, a bit more naked, that kind of look. Nice. Um so it's awesome. So they did it for four years, and now I think it's called the Speed Twin, which is much more racy looking, and I'm not the biggest fan of. Okay. Um, so yeah, got that. Uh, it's a beautiful bike, man. When I saw you pull up today, and, and like I know you like the Japanese vintage bikes, and and they're cool. Yeah. But where you you belong on a on a Triumph, I really think it's 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 it, it just suits you. I feel at home, and it's... a lot more powerful than that uh, SR. Yeah, man, I had up and goes, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's just so much fun. It's it's great. and yeah, it's I'm like, happy for you. It's really thanks, cool. Thanks, brother. And, you know, like uh, I still walk up to it in the morning and just touch the button and it turns on. I'm like, oh, that's so nice. nice. That's nice. That's so nice. <laughs> Reliable. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to break my shins to get it going. <laughs> um, that time that I was playing with your um, throttle, not thinking. <laughs> Last time you were here, I, I was talking to you and I was just opening it and closing it. And I remember you looking at my life hand like, just, what the fuck is he doing? It's just dolly zooming my life away. <laughs> I was like, why are you looking at my hand? What's the big deal? And I, I just forgot because I'd been so long since I've ridden know, motorcycles. I, I was like, oh, this isn't a problem. I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Flooded the engine. And then yeah. you trying to kickstart it. Oh, I felt so guilty. I'm so it's sorry. It's just my life. It's the life I chose. <laughs> but yeah, those days are over for now. I mean, very much so enjoying just having a, you know, button start and big boy. A lot of fun. Nice. Well, it's it's a beautiful bike, and congratulations. Thank you, my man. Thank you. One of these days, we'll we'll go for a cruise together again. Look, it's 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 not like it's never going to happen again. I really want to, but um, and you're going to have to get a massive Harley <sighs> Davidson. Look, I, ju- I just I just at the moment I just can't do it to my mother. I know. I know. I know that's such a such a lame. No, it's a lovely, thoughtful um, thing. No, and and I I, I I put her through it for a few years, you know, riding, and and she got very upset and uncomfortable. But she, you know, to to, to give her some credit, she kind of accepted it at one point, and yeah, just you know, I, I convinced her that I was safe, and I was, you I was safe. very safe. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just think, you know, she gave me a talking to one afternoon, and it just kind of got to me, and I thought, oh, yeah, maybe I should, maybe maybe I'm being a bit selfish. But that's okay. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen again one of these days, but just for now. It's sure. fine. And um, I'll keep digging them up on Marketplace for you in the meantime. Thank you. Keep Just just keep doing market research. I will. Thank I you. Will. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but tell me more, please. Let's get back on track with music. I want to sure. know um, what else you have coming up. You just kind of threw in there a second ago that you're working on new music. So Yes. Um, yeah, so where were we? Japan. Yeah, so we did Japan and then I came back. Um, I'm trying to think of the order of things. Oh, that's right. Uh, there was a busy spot there where we did Froth and Fury. That's that right. Festival yep. In Adelaide, which was a lot of fun. And then the next day went to Japan. Mm. 
and then came back for a little bit um, and then went to back to the States to do more clinics. That's so right. Almost, um, of course, that was that was your that was your last trip. Tell me about that. Oh, it was so good. Um, it was a whirlwind trip. I think I was in the US for under two weeks and I had 10 flights in like as many days. So it was pretty punishing actually. I felt kind of on the back foot, just pretty tired. You did 10 flights with 10 dates? Like no, 10, no, 10, we 10 just, gigs? No, no, I just had a clinic in Los Angeles and a clinic in Boston. And, oh. But just the routing of the flights was all really intense. I okay. kind of had to go Sydney to Los Angeles, Los Angeles to, oh, I'm trying to remember where it was, somewhere and then from there to Boston to LaGuardia. Okay. And then from LaGuardia to Boston. Jesus. Boston back to LaGuardia, LaGuardia oh. to Texas. And then Texas to home. Did you spend any time in Texas or did you just were you just no, at the airport? I, I just walked the, you know, all three Lord of the Rings films combined distance from one end of that airport to the other. Okay. Which I didn't know at the time, but it's actually the biggest airport in the world. So I've uh, been told. Dallas or Austin? Dallas. It's in Dallas. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's truly I feel like insane. I went to Dallas Airport at some time for one. I mean, thing. don't quote me on that. Someone did say that when I was telling <coughs> the story. They said, Yeah, it's like one of, if not the biggest airport and i would have it thought is, it'd be dubai or something but i mean but they say everything's bigger in texas dude it has its own like underground train network to just get you to your terminals and stuff so i was you know on and a train saying, and you decided to walk well to the train oh right and then on the train and then more walking you know i was lugging pelican cases and gig bags and it was a whole thing but were you solo on, on I this was trip solo oh god yeah, i was just a rogue boy oh my goodness um but it was awesome, man. You know, got to see the Sir Crew. We had a really fun clinic at Wildcat Guitars in Escondido, which I want to say is down south, uh, kind of San Diego, mm -hmm. almost, or mm -hmm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. Can't really get my geography right here. But yeah, Escondido is <laughs> taking a hit <laughs> of the Yolang Yolang. Sorry, I wasn't, trying, time? I wasn't trying to distract you, but let's have a hit. So I'll, I'll do it now. Here we go. <laughs> Because I knew the shot yeah. would be on you. I'm like, oh, this shot, the camera's <laughs> going to be on James. I can take a second to have a sniff of this. Uh, don't you sniff without me. But I clearly distracted you. No, so it's, it's beautiful. Um, so, yeah, um, Escondido it is, like kind of San Diego. And then I went to New York for a few days. Didn't do any work there, but was just hanging with some friends of mine who had recently moved over there. Mm. Just, Justin and Nicole. I know them. You, you've met. Of course. The loveliest. So they're set up on... <clears throat> I want to say a Roosevelt Island, which is I, I hadn't heard of it before either. Mm -hmm. But it's it's <laughs> giving a bit of a blank look. <laughs> I don't. I, I, yeah, it's essentially right next to Manhattan. Like technically, it is Manhattan. Okay, and you get this little uh, kind of skiing style gondola over there. Okay, runs every ten minutes, and you just plopped right in the middle of Manhattan. Um, that was so fun. Not mm. not just to um, you know visit my good friends, but just to see New York for the first time. I'd never been there. You'd never been. Dude, never been. That's so cool. My feet were destroyed. We were just on foot, you know, first thing in the morning until until the evening. We I, we ate at amazing places. I did all the kind of touristy things and we went down to the trade centers and we went and I saw my first Broadway show. What did you see? Awesome. <gasps> Don't tell me you saw Book of Mormon. I saw Book of Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I am not a fan of musicals as yeah. a general rule. Neither am Occasionally I. Occasionally I watch one, not that I go very often, but every now and again, I'm like, oh, that was actually pretty good. It's very rare. Book of Mormon might be the best show I've ever seen in my entire life. I was scream, cry <laughs> laughing the entire time. I saw it in New York as well. It is one of the funniest pieces of art. Yeah, it, it was wild. Of a performance. It's just, it's so fucking good. It was such good. a perfect New York day and night because you know we you know we had you know huge touristy you know we just saw wall street and went all over the place and did the things and and then i was actually surprised with that at the end of the day so i just thought we were going for a nice walk and then it was like oh we're going in here to see book of mormon and that was incredible oh they surprised you that's Total really surprise. sweet that's yeah really yeah because i was leaving to boston the next day and you know i saw the show and it was amazing and then when when it finished i walked outside and it was snowing so that was really cool oh how romantic yeah so i got to live that whole little thing but uh yeah new york was incredible had a really good time did you eat a hot dog from a street vendor i don't 
No, I didn't. But I did the slice and a bunch of other kind of, you know, staple things. Yeah. Um, Dude, the, the 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 hot dog from the street vendor is a must. I know. I don't know why. I'm actually a little bit shocked at you, James. You're you're such a foodie. Ugh. I know. I don't. I, I feel like that. I was trying to make that happen, but for some reason it didn't happen. I mean, not that it's ever any good. I mean, it's like no, you, but, uh, you make I don't it want better, it to be good. You, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so bad that it's good. Exactly. Ketchup and mustard and relish, and it's like a, a, a pl- plastic pig snout. <laughs> Just a three D printed. You know, like the, the whitest bread you've ever. <laughs> Like all come together in this glorious but that's moment what of makes it the ten out of ten meal that it is. Absolutely, I, 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 down I don't know why Coke. I didn't. Oh, it's talking dirty. <laughs> I wanted to. I feel like I was trying to make that happen at some point, but we ended up doing the slice. And man, it was like we were on foot like the whole time, and only had sure. a couple of days. So no, we of were course, just hoofing everywhere. And, and the slice and is pretty, pretty up there. It was great. Like another one of those things. It was so bad, and it was awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just like dripping in grease pepperoni cheese pizza oh. on a cold new york day stop it was so good james let's go to new york right now Oofed. i would go straight to the airport i would and it was awesome I had a really nice time and then yeah left uh left the island and went up to boston and i was just in boston for the day what did you think of boston I mean, look, I, to be fair, I wasn't there long enough to give it, uh, it was kind of a work in and out kind of thing. But from the time that I was there, I loved it. I mm. thought it was really cool. It mm. had like a really old quaint kind of look from just what I saw, like really old houses. And it was really pretty just seeing all the wooden old houses all covered in snow and, you know, all the signage everywhere. And of course, you know, hearing the accent and everything was was all a bit of a kick for we've, me we've we've all seen a matt damon movie or two absolutely yeah um lots of yelling it was fantastic <clears throat> yeah i look i i went for a couple of nights a long time ago i looked at um uh berkeley all oh, right oh, i was of course. i was considering going there for a hot minute um and it just didn't make sense in the grand scheme of things so i en- ended up saying no mm. but um it was really cool. I actually, really, I, I still have fond memories of just walking around the streets. It was just, I, I just, I really like Boston. It's yeah. a much smaller city than you think, mm. like in terms of population, and like you think it's like a whole nother New York, and it certainly isn't that. Is it the oldest city in, in or something? James, all of my knowledge of Boston, I oh, just, sorry. I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there, there's something to that. I can't remember, but. It's very old. I yeah, uh, maybe Massachusetts is the oldest American right. state. Right. I really could have just made that up. That's cool. I, I, I'm that's, not even going to Google keep it. piling it on. <laughs> but just start making like like totally yeah, yeah. <laughs> incorrect factoids about America <laughs> and their cities and states. Yeah, dude. Um, but that's cool, man. It sounds like you had a great time. And you just and I you loved did, it. Uh, did you do, do the whole Nam thing as well? Oh, yes, we did. We did. Did I do that? Yes, I did. That's <laughs> we did. It's been so many. Go through now, the files again. Remember. Yeah, but Boston, um, just quickly, yeah, we had the clinic at this place called Matt's Music. Shout out to Matt's <gasps> Music. Uh, is that the... Is that in... I love them oh, very no. much. And the shop oh. is amazing. I'm getting confused with somebody else. There's a store called maybe Matt's Guitars. In Is it in Paris? Oh, I don't know. Matt's Rare Guitars? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I might be making that up too. I make up a lot of Pile things. Pile it on while, okay. while, we're, while we're doing it. Nothing but, factual in this podcast, all made up. Anyway, sorry. I but Matt's you. Music is a shop, you know, I'd seen online for forever. It's one of those things. It's super cool and it was very cool to be there. And the, the, the guys are just so lovely and we had a really nice time and the clinic was fun. And, you know, I feel like I really got to meet some some fans and names that I'd seen following me for like 10 years came out to that one, which was really cool. Um, and the shop is is so great. They have a shop dog that just roams around to give you a sense of how great it is. You need a shop dog. Yep, it's important. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, so that was really fun. And yeah, I think between the clinics we did Nam. It's a little fuzzy for some reason, but yes, we did Nam. And I just was went, your guitar on the on it, the stand. It was. That's that that <coughs> must have been surreal. It was really cool. It was really nice. So they had one there. <laughs> Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time at Nam. I just came in for one afternoon mm-hmm. just to do the rounds and say That's hi to people. That's enough, man. I, I, it's more I, than enough. I, I remember <laughs> at our tender age. I remember when I was very young and I knew about Nam. I think like I was a teenager or something, and I was like, "Oh, wouldn't it be amazing to be there and spend every day you could because all of the gear and all of the music." Oh, yeah. and all, I and remember you, the first time you get there, you're like, "I need to leave." <laughs> 
right now, especially as a drummer. You walk past oh, all the booths the and don't get me wrong. Special corner of hell. I love new gear and I love when I see companies come out with <laughs> – Drum company come up with new specs and new pedals, new new lines of cymbals. They've yeah, got a yeah. new drum kit. They've got this new wood. They work out a new mounting <laughs> system. I'm like, yeah, I love it. And then you go there and it's just a hall full of everybody <laughs> trying every yeah. drum company's new gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like... <laughs> it's ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And it's like... <laughs> And it's nonstop and you can't get away from well, it. The thing I thought was really weird, I don't know if it was like this last year, I don't remember if I went last year. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, I felt like the drum stuff was kind of intermingled in now with like the rest of it. Oh. So I remember there was, you know. They know, don't just have a drum hall and then a guitar hall and no, then an audio. It's, it's gotten much different over the years. You know, obviously I think it's it's changing or, or going through some changes. I think there was th- there was about to say there was a virus that, that changed there, a few there things. There was that, that little thing. But, mm. yeah, ever since then I think it's kind of downsized and reshuffled the way they lay it out a little bit and. Yes, the drum end of it is is a lot. It's it's a lot on the senses. Mm. But um, yeah, so I went in for an afternoon and it was nice. It's it, look, Nam is so great to just catch up with friends. You sure, know, everyone who's doing what we do in our circle is just in one area for one week uh, or one day or whatever it is. So I got to see lots of people that I haven't seen in years, and obviously it's great to catch up with the Sir guys. And um, yeah, my signature guitar was at the booth, so it was cool to. You know, see some people coming around and checking it out and to be there when they came and checked it out was pretty special. Um, and so, yeah, it was the clinics. Excuse me. No, I just had, I just had a thought of like some unknowing guitar player coming up looking at your guitar going, hmm, and then you just popping in and it's like, you like it? Yeah. It's pretty nice, huh? Yeah. It's good, don't you like it? Try it. <laughs> Try it now. Yeah, play one of my riffs right now. <laughs> yeah, so that was cool and... Um, yeah, but I, I actually felt a little unwell during that trip. I had this um, inner ear thing, which I when I found out I had when I came back. Mm. It's a thing called eustachian tube dysfunction, which is essentially little tubes. So, that, sounds like a preset on a <laughs> on an Axe FX. Man, I'd never heard of it either, but I was just feeling kind of nauseous <clears> and like a little a little dizzy and weird over there. So that kind of had me on the back foot for that trip a little bit. But I'm um, sorry. Yeah, dude. You're just, all good now? All good, man. It's just the the tubes that go from your inner ear to your the back of your nose, essentially, which help you pressurize the inner ear. Mm. Um, they can just get blocked and, you know, it's either from allergies or flying too much or if you're like sleeping. Right. Up, I've, I've looked into it quite a bit. If you fall asleep at weird times in the flight, like during the descent or the ascent, mm. and you're not awake to like pop your ears and stuff, you can cause some damage to your ears. Oh, and because I just like put myself down on a bunch of those flights, I was just asleep from, you know, pretty much until we were up to the gate. And I just wrecked my, th- essentially just the pressur- pressurization of the inner ear canals a little bit. So it's um, not related to playing music too loud? No, 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 none of that. It's just, just ear pressure stuff. But I've since resolved it and it's fine. But it made the trip a little bit weird because I was dealing with that while I was over there. Um, so yeah, whirlwind trip, you know, so many flights in like 10 days or whatever it was and got back and yeah, I've just started working on some new music, which I've actually been working on for a couple of months. Now, is this, um, is this James Norwood Avani classic guitar riff stress music (laughs) or is this more in relation to your synth obsession? Nah, man, this is back to back to the guitar. Okay. Um, So I kind of have rebuilt my studio over the last six months. Yeah. So, you know, I've gotten all new sample libraries and updated all my software and started all my templates from scratch and got new plugins. And I've obviously gotten a bunch of new keyboards. Um, I hadn't really done much with my signature guitar since I got it. Mm. I, I managed to do a single, which I put out last year with it but really not that much um i updated all my fractal audio gear mm-hmm. as well and i've got a new bass obviously i got i got the roads and i i got the new mini moog which i have now uh and new monitors as well oh because, you showed me i i yes yeah so I've, tell, I've, tell the world a little bit about your brand new monitors the Genelex, the 8331a's um they're a very cutting edge monitor, which previously only existed in this very large format. 
and they were quite price prohibitive, but they've since made them in the, you know, uh, home studio kind of size. And yeah, they're a, very, they're a smart monitor. So they come with a microphone and they tune themselves. Oh, that's fun. I hope that doesn't make the podcast. I hope it does. <laughs> Hugh's getting a phone call. I'm people. getting a phone call. Um, <laughs> um, that's very embarrassing. Very unprofessional. Let me turn my phone off. Easy, easy, easy. all good, man. Instead of I just on every, silent. I think everyone in the world will understand that we've all had that moment. I don't think that shouldn't be linked into the... Anyway, that would totally uh, ruined your, your flow. Not Please at all. Continue. I'm going to stay with that for a second because <laughs> I, I had a clinic and was playing, you know, the song. No. Of course. No. Yes. You, you had the track playing off your phone. Of course I did. Oh, no. <laughs> And then <laughs> a clinic. Where was this? Oh, man, I can't remember where it was, but it has happened. Definitely. Oh, my God. So I think God. no one is immune to that moment you had just there. <sighs> well, um, I, I, I feel embarrassed, but look, it does happen. Yeah. It's um, a lesson for next time. Definitely easy. turn easy. the phone off. And you know, when I'm editing this, um, if I hate it that much, we can just come and do this again. Yeah. <laughs> we can shoot oh episode God. one again. Yeah. Oh I'm God. joking. This one, this is it. This is happening. Yeah. This is it, Hugh. This has to be it. We're yeah. not We're not spending any more time on episode one. Um, but anyway, look, I, I always thought that uh, monitoring for me was always kind of the weakest link in my kind of uh, tools that I work with to make music. And that's only because I didn't want to invest in really high-end monitors because you should have a really well-treated room mm. if you're buying really high-end monitors. Mm. And so Genelec have kind of circumvented that problem by having monitors that listen to your room and then automatically equalize and tune themselves based off what your room is doing. So it kind of negates the you know a big part of having to have a treated room. So you're listening to like a truthful representation of what's going on you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, this, this corner is boomy up here or you're getting a false sense of travel because of this wall and it will make those adjustments to themselves. It's very That's amazing. crazy. It's totally crazy. I will say this, there, and, I, and I understand that, and I'm yes. not as much of an audio nerd as you are. You sure. know a lot more about gear like that than I do. Mm -hmm. um, I have the Yamaha HS80s. Uh, yeah, yeah, 80s or 8. Oh, and I think they're 8, sorry, yep. HS8s. Mm -hmm. the big, the, the, they're about this big. Mm-hmm. And they're fantastic. I had them right before these. Right. Okay. So to me, I don't think I ever need anything. They're bangers. Better than that. I, I mean, I would just use them now. <coughs> they're, they're absolutely great monitors. Love yeah. Them. Love but them. at least, but they're also fun to listen to because mm -hmm. they have a lot of bass in them. Yep. They just slam. Your new ones aren't as fun. Yeah. They're not. They're not. Sadly. And that's and and I and I know I understand it's not an entertainment system. That's right. You're not there to to listen to the fattest riffs written by other people. You're there to actually pinpoint what's going on in the mix Correct. and these new speakers will do that for you yeah they do so i'm happy for you but when you <laughs> i just never forget i came over to your place and you i've got these new speakers but oh dude i was just listening to nickelback there's like the <laughs> fattest <laughs> riff in this one song that's right you gotta like blast it and you turned it up and i was like no oh. but, but i remember i was you, so disappointed I remember you turning it up so loud i was like oh my god my apartment's gonna come down <laughs> when this riff kicks in <laughs> yeah yeah, um, but no, I was like, oh, this is actually not as fun as I thought. But oh, I, but but listening to it, I I I get it. Yeah. I understand how oh, clear if you, if you everything just want to is. Dime music, it's always better on like a large format monitor, like an HSA, just like a physically massive speaker. It yeah. always throws a lot and gets a lot more done for a lot less. Or a subwoofer in the back of a Supra. Oh, I mean, dude, let's not talk about that. Okay, no, another time. All right, all right. another time. Um, <laughs> So anyway, look, the the kind of point of that little rant there was I wanted to redo everything that I used to make music with before I started again. And that took some time and some dollars, obviously, and there was slowly, slowly putting it all together. So what what do you think is the um, – with all this new gear, mm -hmm. um, is, is, is the goal for the new album to sort of elevate it sonically? Mm -hmm. Big as, time. As, okay. Yeah, as as much as songwriting and 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 um, showcasing your um, your melodic journey, mm -hmm. but you're now trying to sonically yeah. lift it up and mm -hmm. bring it to another level. Yeah, man. So I think the big things will be obviously the tone sets will be really different. The production will hopefully be a step up in the ways that I'd like to get it to. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, having the all analog key bed to it will be really exciting for me as well. It's going to be just Rhodes and Mini Moog, so no other keyboards whatsoever. And I'm right. playing all of those by hand. Um, no plugins. This is legitimate mm -hmm. 
stuff. Yeah. So I'm very excited by that. But, you know, it was just a process of revamping everything and then getting to having to learn all of this new stuff, having mm. to know how it all works and, you know, kind of start from scratch, you know, because mm. over the last 10 years I had a system of things and a template that I would use and I just felt it was time to wipe the slate clean and start from fresh. Mm. And so it took some time to put that together, but I have one finished song now on the shelf ready to go and I'm very, very happy with the results. And I'm working, you know, with the assumption that I'm going to be doing a full length record, um, which I haven't done since Omen, Faustum, um, and I imagine will probably take me two years if I'm realistic, if I work at it pretty consistently. So I'm just starting that process now. Um, sorry, I'm making a little note here. Are you... Sorry. This is your first full length record in an, in exactly how long? When was the last? When um, when was the last one? Uh, it was Omen, so that would have been twenty nineteen. <laughs> I want to say I probably got that wrong, but it's probably two thousand and eighteen or two thousand and nineteen, mm -hmm. maybe even twenty twenty. God, um, because I went through a patch of kind of prolifically releasing EPs and singles for a hot minute, like over the COVID kind of period. So, yeah, that was the last full-length record that I did. And that took me about three years to work on. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, it's such a strange thing. I, I don't really <clears throat> fully understand the um, instrumental prog world um, mm. exactly. But I know that in more of, like, the pop and rock and, and sort of maybe more um, mainstream metal world, mm. sometimes doing just singles and EPs and, and, and bonus tracks is kind of the way to go because people's attention spans aren't what they used to be and mm -hmm. it's very hard to convince someone to listen to an entire yep. full-length album um, from start to finish. Yeah, I do, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would imagine that in the progressive metal world, people are much more likely to, if they're a fan of your music, to sit down and put on the record or whatever on the computer and just sit and listen to it and actually yeah. go on the journey with you. Definitely. That, that's a hundred percent true. And yeah. I've, I've had that feedback a lot over the years and yeah, I think, you know, the vast majority of people that like this music, which is, you know, obviously a niche within a niche. So people aren't kind of vaguely interested in this music, right? Uh, there's not a lot of them, but they're, they're, you know, very attentive to it and really into it. So yeah, they're, they're much more, appreciative of being given a big body of work to absorb and really peel apart over time instead of the like you were saying the kind of you know the big mac approach of just have once throughout the wrapper onto the next kind of thing yeah so yeah that's why i'm excited to put together something big and immersive and fantastic you know kind of demanding on the listener for them to get into now do you <clears throat> because your music is so complicated complex mm. maybe not complicated complex mm. and um what i suppose my question is what is your process when in turn in terms of actually getting the track list together do you write like 20 songs and then cut it down to 10 or because it's so complex do you kind of mm. do you build everything upwards so you have mm. to um once you, it's more like a, a each piece is like a work of art you have to know when it's finished and then sign off and then move on to one more and then you'll get to the body and then that's it that's that, it that's it yeah, yeah. so I, I kind of write mix as i go in a linear sense yeah so by the time i finished one song it's mixed and done and that's it yeah. ready and then i will work on the next song and every time i start a new song i'm just kind of wondering one of two things either what did I brush up against in that previous song that I really liked and that I want to do more of and mm. concentrate a little bit more of on? Or what have I not done yet that should be showcased relevant to my tastes right now? And it's just kind of one of those two things. That's really cool. I never thought about that. So so, yeah. so you you write a song or a piece. Um, what do you like to call them? Do you call them songs yeah. or pieces uh, a song a loose song? definition of a song well, yeah, yeah okay okay but yeah that's a song <clears throat> yeah. a song um so you write a song yeah and then you might have like a little motif that's or right. a little moment or a little melodic yes. idea that maybe existed in, in a short maybe 
five second moment or exactly. a small section, you go, oh, that's brilliant. And so then you take that motif mm-hmm. and you flesh it out for the next track mm-hmm. song. Exactly. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, so that that's al- really cool. Yes. Yeah, so that always makes it easy to just kind of at least get that fire started for the next thing. You know? And then your listener, especially if they are a musician, especially if they are into progressive metal as you as they're a genuine fan they'll probably pick up on that they'll be like oh that's yep. the melody from the guitar solo in section eight in the yeah, moment that's right that's, yeah that's cool. right so like they do appreciate the nuggets and i you know i always get cool feedback easter on eggs little, on the easter eggs exactly boom so i do that essentially until i feel like everything i wanted to say has been said and i start to fear that if i was to do more i would maybe just be you know, moving this thing sideways, maybe, you know, there's nothing new that I have to say stylistically or playing wise. So that's when I call it. Yeah, pretty much. Fair enough. And do you, do you have a, a set amount of tracks in, in mind? Are you going to do 10, 12, eight? Yeah, it's hard to know, man. Like I always <clears> think, you know, that eight, eight is a good range of tracks, but it also depends how long the songs are. I was going to say, because it's, yeah. it's, it's one thing to have like 10 or 12 tracks on a album full of three minute songs but if you're if you're putting out pieces that are six seven eight minutes long yeah like i did sigil which was my acoustic kind of focused release Mm. and i think you gave me that vinyl of that was it sigil i did yeah Yeah, it's beautiful thank you man i have the first pressing of that and you do thank you Um, oh thank you i well yeah i i I love that record and we we played some of the songs live on the last tour and we're actually bringing one of them back to the set as like an electric version of those nice. songs, which should be pretty fun. Um, but, you know, that to me was an EP. You know, it was three songs, but all of them were over 10 minutes long. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. Just got hit by the prog flu. Yeah, no. <laughs> Dude, prog flu. <laughs> no. I just, Quick, had a, a I, just, I just had a sip of, <laughs> of soda water and it just, as you're speaking, it hit me so... It can. You don't want to <laughs> muck around with soda water. Oh, my God. It'll hit you. I'm so sorry. I hope I didn't ruin the no, answer of that I mean, question. Dude, no, that's just me in any job interview. This might, kind of this might not make the <laughs> podcast. The <laughs> we'll see, we, might, we might edit this out. Or maybe not. We'll see how we go. I say leave it in. Leave the phone ringing in. <laughs> leave all, all the mishaps yeah, in. Leave the me in public. You know, talking moment in choking. I just don't want to ruin your answers, but um, maybe anyway. No, we'll not see. at all. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so sigil. Like, anyway, that's to me that was an EP. It was three songs, but they're all ten minute, ten minutes long. So I guess it's thirty minutes long. It's kind of encroaching on album time. Absolutely. Um, so it just depends how, again, how long the tracks are, you know. And I like to listen to it at the end and just make sure that it has as a body of work, whether it's a, if whether it's one song, an EP, an album, whatever it is, that it feels like it has a really distinct start, middle, and end. That's yeah. like really important. It should start and have a, have a feeling of being well into it and it should wrap up, you know. So I can usually get a good sense of those things and when I feel like I'm starting to fly close to that wrap-up period, I might know, okay, cool, there's maybe one or two tops more songs to do here and then it should close up nicely. Beautiful. Um, and when can yeah. we expect this? What, what is the timeline on something like this? You said you've got one song done. I feel like it's not coming out tomorrow. It's not. <laughs> uh, well, it just depends what happens. Um, I think, you know, going to do more clinics this year, you know, look at doing some shows at some point as well. It just depends what happens. But all I can look at is the past and the last full length thing that I did, like I said, it took me about three years to do. And mm. I worked on it almost every day. Wow. Yeah. I, I, you know, I get up pretty early and then I work on it, you know, from like 7 a.m. till midday. And then I start my normal day. So with life and clinics and teaching and everything else that you do, yeah, we shouldn't be holding our breath. Uh, maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't the announcement for the album coming no. out. <laughs> yeah. Coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, I feel like I've gotten pretty efficient at the process, though. So it, it, I imagine it would be a little bit quicker. Um, so... We'll see, but I will be updating, you know, anyone who's interested on Instagram with the progress as I always do. And, and people can find you on Instagram at uh, JN Ivani. Perfect. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I'll so put all that links in there. Thank you, man. Yeah, that's that's the only kind of social media I use these days. Yeah, look, <clears throat> I've had people tell me that even for this podcast that I need to be getting on TikTok and I just Ugh. I just don't think I can do it. I, look, I say that now and yeah. then there probably will be a moment where I have to be on it mm. and... If I have to, then I have to. But mm. I understand Instagram 
I understand that, you know, Facebook is definitely no longer a thing in terms of really getting your stuff out there. It's just to keep, you know, in contact with your auntie and uncle. Marketplace. Market, <laughs> yeah, dude. I swear to God, I, if there was no <laughs> Facebook marketplace, I would absolutely delete Facebook. It's the only reason I have it. It's I the want only them, reason. You know how they have And the, I wanted to just browse marketplace without Facebook. And uh, I had a rage morning to find out that I was like, oh, I have to open up my Facebook account again just to, you know. Well, you know how they have a separate app for the messenger. Yes. I want them to come out with a separate app for the marketplace. If they could, come on, Zuckerberg, come on Zuckerberg, if you're listening, <laughs> please, please yeah. just come out with a marketplace app yeah. and I will delete Facebook. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm down on that. But yeah. Um, but yeah, you'll keep everybody updated, of course. And any shows, James? No shows for now. I just okay. am keeping the schedule clear to do clinics this year, <clears throat> which, you know, I, I kind of told the guys within that first year, two year window of. Uh, when the guitar came out, I will be available to do the clinics as much as possible. You're doing one in Sydney soon. Well, yeah, there's some stuff in the works. I don't want to announce uh, kind of too much just yet. Okay. Only because maybe it might be getting a moved around somewhere else in the year. Okay, but that's there, understandable. But there'll be, yeah, we're looking at the US, Europe, potentially some Asian dates as well. Nice. Um, potentially a trip back to Japan on this one as well, which would be cool. Lovely. And then... Yes, we're looking to finally do one right here in Sydney. Okay. Well, if you need cool. a guitar tech, I have a lot of experience <laughs> now. I will 1,000% <laughs> have you do it. You're actually a great tech. You've teched at my shows yeah. like a few times for various well, things. And I'm, no, but I'm always so comforted when you're there. You know, when you're up there, like you've been fiddling around helping with Weedle with stuff and, you know, obviously keeping an eye on the playback rig and everything. Yeah. I remember you were there for that first show of that tour. And then when I was finally out there on my own left with the <laughs> playback rig, I was like, oh, God, <laughs> you. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate but you been, saying you that. You have always been very helpful at shows. And, you know, it's like like any other muso guy that comes to a show you know what what the deal is you're, and i think we help each other and, yeah, and, and, and when yeah, i'm yeah. when i'm playing i've got my drummer friends who are there helping me yeah. as well yeah, and, yeah yeah um we kind of all help each other which is nice yeah but um, you better be there i I'm, <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time <laughs> <laughs> awesome i love I, I, I genuinely love it i genuinely like to you know i can't i can't sit still at a show yeah no, i can't just stand there and drink my beer and watch i'm like no. i need to do something yeah, can totally. i help yeah yeah well, I, was at, I was at a show the other day um a couple of my friends were playing Haken band from the UK and my <coughs> buddy Ro from Melbourne. They're, they were doing a show in Sydney and yeah, same thing. You know, I just, I was like, yeah, I'll come along and watch the show. And before I knew it, I was like helping with the videos <laughs> up on stage in the middle of the show and all the rest of it. And it's, you got to help the boys. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, so James, look, I mean, we're going to wrap it up pretty soon. Awesome. Um, it's been wonderful having nice. you here. Uh, I think that there's, you know, I'm glad that we got to do this again, seriously, because yeah, too, uh, just too much time had lapsed since the last one. And you've done some more things. You've done some much cooler things Absolutely. since then. And yeah. I'm glad we got an opportunity to talk about that. But before we go, is there anything that does maybe need an announcement or something you want to talk about or touch on? Nothing, nothing particularly except that, yeah, like if anyone watching is interested in what I'm doing, do keep an eye on my Instagram because as far as clinics and any like upcoming album and show stuff, Plus mm -hmm. some other little nuggets product wise. Yeah, just keep an eye out there because I will be rolling out some information on that stuff pretty soon. Nice. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah, man. James, thank you so much for being here, brother. My brother, thank you so much for having me. It was Always a pleasure. Should... Mate, I love you, and um, <laughs> love you and, too. and we'll do this again. Maybe we'll get, I'll get you back for episode ten rather than you know episode <laughs> one for the third time. Awesome. All right, sniff to that. Dude. Oh, let's have Absolutely. a cheers and a sniff. <laughs> cheers. Thanks for having me on, man. Everyone's gonna think we're doing <laughs> oh, drugs. Yeah. Oh, careful. <laughs> Oh.